Hello and welcome to the last part of my series, the most famous myth slash cryptid in every U.S. state. This is part five of five. We're now in the southeast region of the United States and there's a lot of cool creatures here, so stick around. Before I get into it, I just wanna say thank you guys so much for watching all my videos. Um, this series has been awesome. It's been a lot of fun to make um, and I want to continue making cool videos for you guys. So if you have any ideas for future series, feel free to put them in the comments and I'll try to get around to reading all of them. Anyways, go ahead and hit subscribe and let's get into it. First up, we got West Virginia with one of the most famous cryptids in the world, Mothman. So Mothman has quite the following for a really good reason. He's actually more of a worldwide phenomenon than just a myth from one state. I'll explain why. Mothman's first sighting was in Point Pleasant, West Virginia in 1966. The local newspaper ran a story about a couple who saw a man-sized bird-like creature while driving home at night. They described it as being 7 feet tall with red eyes and having a 10 foot wingspan. They said it followed their car and even flew as fast as 100 miles per hour because they were trying to outrun it and at one point it got in front of their car and laid down in the road like they were hoping that they would get out and investigate which they didn't do because they thought it was a trap. They eventually got away from it and then came back later that night with a sheriff to find a strange lump of dust laying where they claimed that it had laid down. After this, there was at least 100 other Mothman reports, which skeptics believe were sightings of sandhill cranes or great horned owls. But this doesn't explain what happened next. A journalist named John Keel, who was investigating the sightings, claimed that he had received messages from Mothman somehow, like telepathically. He said he got a warning about a regional blackout that was about to occur. When the moment came for the blackout to happen, the power stayed on, but the bridge in Point Pleasant, called Silver Bridge, collapsed killing 46 people, and then the sightings of Mothman suddenly stopped. Leading up to this tragedy, many eyewitnesses reported that during Mothman's year-long visit, they too felt a pending sense of doom. So that was in the 1960s, that was the first documented Mothman incident, but later in 2007, another bridge collapse would be linked to the Mothman. Reports of Mothman sightings flooded in shortly before the collapse of the I-35 West Mississippi River Bridge in Minnesota. The incident was eerily similar to the other collapse, 13 people died and 145 were injured. Witnesses said that they had seen the creature for months near the bridge and the description of it was having a 10 foot wingspan and red eyes. So these were two incidences where Mothman was repeatedly seen in areas immediately before disaster strikes uh, in the United States, but there's also a very similar incident that occurred in Germany with a very similar creature. Sightings of what many call the Freierberg Schrecker occurred in Freierberg Germany in 1978. So one morning, a group of miners were going to work to the mouth of their mine when they found a man in a trench coat blocking their path. But when they approached him, they realized it wasn't a man, but a large entity with large bat-like wings that looked like a coat. The creature then shrieked so loud that the miner said it sounded like 50 men screaming at once, combined with the sound of a train's emergency brakes. And the men were terrified and they ran away. One hour later, the mine collapsed and authorities said that if the men had been at their posts, they all would have died. For some reason, one third of the miners that saw this later developed serious mental disorders, uh, which is actually a fate that's shared by Mothman witnesses all around the world. Uh, not sure why. Now I have one more Mothman incident that's pretty crazy. The Fukushima nuclear plant disaster of 2011. So Fukushima, Japan had a really bad earthquake which caused a really bad tsunami. Um, so just days after the tsunami, uh, reports of seeing a Mothman-like creature began to spread across the internet. The sightings were mainly near or around the Fukushima nuclear plant. One night, two men who were working at the plant went outside when they started to hear a loud shrieking noise. They said they looked around the area and then noticed a large creature sitting on one of the power plant's buildings. They then said it spread its wings which were about 10 feet wide and did circles around the buildings that were housing the nuclear reactors that would melt down just weeks later. Then it swooped down at them multiple times and when it flew past them they said that they felt an overwhelming feeling of dread and a terrible fear that they should not be there. Just weeks after this incident, the Fukushima nuclear disaster occurred, forcing 150,000 people to evacuate. So this is very strange. Some question if Mothman appears to warn us about disaster, or if he's some sort of creature here to feed off of human tragedy. 
or if he's just an owl. Moving on to Virginia, we have the Snallygaster. So in the Blue Ridge Mountains of Virginia in the 1730s, a large area there was settled by almost solely Germans. Early accounts here describe the community being terrorized by a monster that they called Schneilergeist, which meant quick spirit in German. A long time later, in 1909, reports of a strange flying beast started to occur that people called the Snallygaster, and this was all in the Frederick County, Virginia area. Suddenly, there were sightings all over the place. They were in West Virginia, Ohio, and even in New Jersey, where they found footprints of it in the snow. The first person to see it, James Harding, described it as having enormous wings, a long, sharp beak, claws like steel, and one eye in the middle of its forehead. He said it made shrill screeching noises and looked like a cross between a tiger and a vampire. Which vampire may have been a good description because they reported that it actually killed a man named Bill Jefferson by piercing his neck with its sharp bill and slowly sucking his blood. Also, it was said that in West Virginia it attempted to capture a woman, but after failing to grab her, it instead roosted on a nearby barn and laid an egg. Which it was later said that the men there in West Virginia had rigged up an incubator and was trying to hatch this egg for some reason, uh, but there's no information on what happened to the egg hatching situation. So It was also said that in Maryland it was shot at by a local there who said it laid another egg that was big enough to hatch an elephant. Sightings of the Snallygaster was actually such a big deal at the time that at one point they reported that President Theodore Roosevelt might postpone his trip to Europe so that he could lead an expedition to capture it. Also, apparently the Smithsonian said that they were interested in the beast after hearing the egg situation in West Virginia, so I don't think they got it though. It was even so widely believed that they wanted to record descriptions of the Snallygaster for scientific purposes from the residents who had seen the beast, which they did. The death of the Snallygaster was also extremely eventful. The creature was flying near Frog Hollow in Maryland when they said it was attracted to the smell of a 2,500 gallon vat of moonshine. And as the monster flew over the moonshine, it was overcome by the smell of the fumes and it dropped into the boiling vat where shortly after some federal agents showed up to destroy the moonshine because that was their job, uh, but they were surprised to find the dead monster in the vat of boiling moonshine. However, they still went ahead and blew up 500 pounds of dynamite underneath the moonshine, which is why they were there. They were there to destroy the moonshine, uh, destroying the remains of the Snallygaster. And so that was the end of the Snallygaster. And any proof of it? Very sad. Kentucky, we have the Kelly Little Green Men, also known as the Hopkinsville Encounter or the Hopkinsville Goblins case. This was an incident that was a lot of people saying that they had a close encounter with presumably extraterrestrials. So I didn't know this until doing more research, but apparently this event actually inspired the movie E.T. and the creation of the Pokemon Sableye and the denizens in Call of Duty Black Ops 2 Zombies, those little creatures that would like jump on you uh, when you are playing transit when you weren't on the bus, they looked like a little demon goblin thing. So back to the story, there were dozens of eyewitnesses which included two families that were present at the farmhouse and other civilians in the area who had no connection to the family. The most significant witnesses included several local police officers and a state trooper who also saw and heard strange phenomena such as unexplained lights and noises that same night. So the seven people that were present in the farmhouse when the main event happened claimed that they were terrorized by an unknown number of creatures that were similar to gremlins, which are now referred to as the Hopkinsville goblins in popular culture. The residents of the farmhouse described them as being three feet tall with upright pointed ears, thin limbs, long arms, and claw-like hands or even talons. And they said that the creatures were either silvery in color or wearing something metallic, uh, their movements on occasion seemed to defy gravity. They were like floating around on the ground or appearing in high places. And when they would walk, they would move with a swaying motion like they were wading through water. Although the creatures never entered the house, they would pop up in windows and in doorways and they woke up the children in the house to a hysterical frenzy. The families fled the farmhouse in the middle of the night and went to the local police station where the sheriff, Russell Greenwell, noted that they were visibly shaken. Then the families returned to the farmhouse with the sheriff and 20 officers. Police saw evidence of the struggle and damage to the house, as well as seeing strange lights and hearing noises themselves. 
The witnesses from the farmhouse also claimed that they had to use firearms to shoot at the creatures, um, but it had like little to no effect, and the house and the surrounding grounds were extensively damaged during the incident. Moving on to Tennessee, we got the Tennessee Wild Man. So according to folklore, during the 1800s, the McNary County, Tennessee had a circus show that was displaying a creature that looked like Sasquatch, but was more human-like. However, it broke free from its cage and escaped into the hills of Tennessee. He was described as being seven feet tall with dark gray hair and having piercing red eyes. And it was said to have a horrible war cry that sounded similar to the skunk ape. It was said that the wild man had a strange obsession with targeting dogs and women, and that many women allegedly had almost been captured by the wild man but had always escaped. There's not a whole lot more to say about this one. A couple guys apparently had a run-in with the wild man about 20 years ago uh, in the Tennessee mountains, but I kind of don't think so because it would be 150 years old now, so probably not. Unless it was like a different creature or something similar to it. North Carolina, we've got the Vampire Beast, or the Beast of Bladenboro. So this is another large monster with vampiric qualities. It's said to have killed several livestock and pets in Bladenboro, North Carolina during the 1950s. In this incident, there was a span of 10 days where it was attributed with killing four dogs, three hogs, some cows, and one goat. It was also said to drain the blood of all of its kills. It had a sighting from a woman who said she was outside and the beast was stalking her, and then she ran back inside. Uh, but then she said that the beast left a cat-like footprint, which all these killings and then the sighting of it led to a huge hunt in the town of Bladenboro, where children could not leave their house and the men were storming through the forest with guns trying to find the creature. But after a large bobcat was killed by a hunter, they decided that they were satisfied and they ended the search. However, in 2007, some say that the beast returned because this guy found 60 goats that were dead that had blood drained and their heads crushed. And then a little ways away from that guy, another farmer lost his goats in the same way. And other places said that they had lost a total of 10 dogs in just two weeks. They also found footprints that are four inches across, but after all these incidences, nothing has occurred lately. South Carolina, we have the Lizard Man of Scape or Swamp. This is another cryptid that has its roots in Native American mythology. So there's this Cree legend that took place in modern day Alabama, Georgia, and South Carolina about a human sized lizard monster. The first modern day reported sighting was in 1987 by a 17 year old named Christopher Davis. Davis said he encountered the creature while driving home at night from work at 2 a.m. According to his account, he stopped in the road bordering scape or swamp in order to change a blown out tire. But when he was finishing up his tire, he turned around and heard thumping noises behind him to see the creature running towards him. Davis said the creature grabbed onto his car and then jumped onto the roof and he had to swerve around to try to throw it off. He said he saw its glowing red eyes from 25 feet away and that it had three big fingers, long black nails, and green rough skin. In the month that followed the Davis sighting, there were several further reports of a large lizard-like creature and of unusual scratches and bite marks that were found on cars that were parked near the swamp. The local sheriff's department even got a plaster mold made of a three-toed footprint that they found, uh, but they decided not to send it to the FBI because some biologists that were with them said that they'd be unclassifiable and that they were kind of inconsistent. But the sightings attracted tourists and people that were interested in seeing the creature, and a nearby radio station, WCOS, offered a $1 million reward to anybody who could capture the creature alive. However, almost immediately after this, reports of the creature declined, and so did the popularity of it. Next up is Arkansas, the Falk Monster. Also known as the Boggy Creek Monster and the Swamp Stalker, it's the subject of two popular documentaries. The most famous sighting was in 1970, when a local Arkansas family was allegedly being terrorized by a 7-foot tall, ape-like creature that was similar to Bigfoot but it had blackish red fur and three toes. After two men from the family had had enough, they went to chase it away, and after pursuing it, they ended up thinking that they shot it twice, but then they realized there was another Falk monster back at their house trying to get inside to their women. These men were able to get back to their house and protect their women, but after this incident, there was many reports of similar three-toed ape men around Arkansas and Texas areas. And honestly, I'm not sure how there was two documentaries on these creatures because I really couldn't find a whole lot of information on it, so. Moving on, Louisiana. 
We've got the Rougarou, also known as the Cajun Critter or the Loop Guru. This is a legend about a shape-shifting monster that lives in the swamps of Louisiana. So the history is a little wonky. Basically, the idea came from medieval France when they used to have witch hunts back in the day. Uh, they would accuse people on trial of witchcraft or of being a Loop Guru, which I'm pretty sure that's werewolf in French. Later, a bunch of French people migrated to Canada and then down to Louisiana, and that's why there's a lot of French culture down there. In the Cajun legends, the creature was said to prowl the swamps around the greater New Orleans area and the sugarcane fields and woodlands of the region. The Rougarou most often is described as a creature with a human body in the head of a wolf or a dog, similar to the werewolf legend. Often the story was told to children to make them obey and not wander off during the night. According to another variation, the wolf-like beast will hunt down and kill Catholics who don't follow the rules of Lent. Along with this Catholic version, the legend said that someone turns into a Rougarou by breaking the rules of Lent seven years in a row. But the common legend says that the Rougarou is under a spell for 101 days. After that time, the curse is transferred to the last person it bit, where the past Rougarou turns back into a human. Other stories range from the Rougarou being a rabbit, to the Rougarou being derived from witchcraft, which in that claim, the witch can make itself a Rougarou or turn someone else into one by cursing them. Moving on to Mississippi, we got the Pascagoula Elephant Men, also known as the Pascagoula River Aliens. So the Pascagoula abduction occurred in 1973 when two co-workers claimed that they were abducted by aliens while fishing near the Pascagoula River in Mississippi. This was an extremely famous incident. It's regarded as one of the best known claims of an alien abduction. To summarize, when some guys were fishing the Pascagoula River in southern Mississippi, they claimed that a 40 foot long egg shaped UFO descended on them. Then three alien dudes came out and started floating towards them from the ship. They described the creatures as being roughly humanoid in shape and standing at five feet tall. The creatures had pale skin that was wrinkly like an elephant no eyes, and slits for mouths. The beings also had lobster-like claws at the ends of their arms and elephant-like feet. They reported that the creatures were moving mechanically, kind of like a robot. It goes on to talk about how they were taken onto the ship and that they were probed, not by aliens, but by a very human-looking lady. And then they were placed back onto the fishing bank unharmed after it was all done. It's weird because they were completely sober when the incident happened, but there's no proof that it did, so... All right, Alabama, we got White Thing. This one has almost no information too, but I'll tell you what I got. Uh, basically, there's several accounts of seeing a large white creature in Alabama, uh, but witnesses all describe it differently. Most people report seeing a seven foot tall creature like Bigfoot that's covered in white hair, while others describe seeing a white lion or even a white alien humanoid that they see inside or around caves. It's known for its ability to move extremely quickly and its eerie screech that sounds kind of like a woman's scream. Many have speculated it's an albino Bigfoot or perhaps an albino bear, but there's also a whole Facebook group for it, so if you want to join that, uh, go ahead and do that. It's pretty cool. <laughs> Georgia, the Altamaha Ha. Also called Alti, this is a river monster that's been sighted in the Altamaha River in southern Georgia. The legend of this monster has been talked about by the local Tama Native American tribe in the state of Georgia for hundreds of years. The Altamahaha is described as having a sturgeon-like body with a bony ridge going down the top, front flippers, and no back limbs, kind of like a dolphin with that tail, and also having the snout of a crocodile. Many people got really excited in 2018 because they thought they had found one. Uh, they were really convinced, but later they found out that it was a stuffed shark with paper mache but it looks really real. All right, last one, Florida. We've got the skunk ape. Once again, this is another Sasquatch gigantopithecus-like creature. Some people call it the Florida Bigfoot. The skunk ape is a bipedal humanoid that's had over 300 alleged sightings. It's said to inhabit the forests and swamps of the southeast region of the United States, including Texas, Georgia, Louisiana, and most notably the Florida Everglades. It's said to have black or red fur and glowing red eyes, which is kind of weird because most primates don't have retinas that reflect light. The skunk ape's most obvious characteristic is its terrible odor where it gets its name. One of the first reports was in 1818 when a newspaper in Apalachicola, Florida released a report that spoke about a man-sized monkey raiding food stores and stalking fishermen along the shores. One other alleged report, I think in the 1970s, came from two Palm City Beach County Sheriff deputies 
who reported seeing a tall ape-like animal that stalked them through the grove before they opened fire on it to make it go away. They didn't really get a great look at it, I don't think. They just opened fire on it. America. One of the biggest incidences with the skunk ape was in the year 2000 when the Sarasota, Florida Police Department received a letter from an anonymous woman. Within the letter, there was two photos with what the woman said was an escaped orangutan who had been stealing her apples on her back porch for the past three nights, which a lot of cryptid enthusiasts said that this creature photoed was definitely the skunk ape. Most sightings of the skunk ape can probably be dismissed as black bear sightings, um, as a black bear can really stand up and look like a completely different animal. But there's this crazy video this guy took in Mississippi titled, I think I saw the skunk ape, please help. And in this video, it depicts a large, hairy humanoid crouching in the water, pulling bark off of a tree. Many say this is definitely skunk ape footage, but I mean, it's pretty good footage. You should take a look, it's crazy. Well, actually, I probably have it right there, so. And that is it for the whole series, guys. Thank you guys who watched the whole thing so much. It means a lot to me. It was a lot of fun making all of these, so if you liked it, hit the subscribe button. And if you have any series ideas, put them in the comments. I will try to look at all of them. I'll probably end up throwing this all into one big video like people have been recommending to me. Um, anyways, thank you guys so much. It means a lot to me. Have a great day.